Hello there, Scorpio. Thank you so much for stopping by for your weekly tarot video forecast for the week of February 29th. Happy leap year through March 6th. So Monday, fellow Scorpios, what we have coming up is the Seven of Coins. This just means that we are going to be receiving some kind of payoff for something that we have started previously. So this can be um, maybe that we've put in some kind of investment. This can be, um, I've actually seen this play out in an emotional way where somebody was putting time and effort and energy into um, a relationship to earn trust from somebody where that trust started showing up whenever this card showed up. Excuse me. This can um, definitely be financial though. I think in most cases this is talking about financial. So this is getting some kind of financial reward or some kind of reward from something that we started initially expecting that by um, putting our efforts into the situation or putting our resources possibly into the situation that we would get a reward back eventually. And so we have it showing up here on Monday, Scorpios. Tuesday, what we have coming up is we have the two of coins showing up in reverse. Two of coins showing up in reverse is telling me that we're having a hard time with keeping everything balanced and under control. So this can be a day when we're having a hard time balancing our checkbook. We may get a notice that says, um, oh, we're over, that we're overdrawn. <laughs> now we owe this fee, blah, blah, blah. That, excuse me, that can happen on Tuesday pretty easily with a card like this, but this doesn't have to be about financial. This can also be about um, actually like geographic locations that we have appointments that we're supposed to be in different locations at different times and we're really pushing our luck on um, travel time or maybe there's a lot of traffic or whatever that makes it um, impossible to make every single stop the way that we had hoped to. Or this can be talking about having so many tasks lined up to do on Tuesday that there just gets to be no way that we can actually do them. Um, we just have things that are coming in on us on top of what we've got scheduled is what I'm feeling. Now, when I see this card come up, what I like to advise is if there's any way that you can delegate some of these responsibilities to somebody else who's responsible and who will take care of it, then this is definitely the day to do it, just so things don't fall through the cracks. Okay, so that's Tuesday for us Scorpios. Sounds like a busy one. Another busy one. I don't know about you guys, but I've been really busy lately, so that'll just be par for the course. <laughs> All right, so Wednesday, what we have showing up, Scorpios, is we have the King of Swords in reverse. And the King of Swords in reverse is a personality that we're dealing with. For many of us, this is going to be an air sign, but it doesn't have to be. And also, for many of us, this is going to be a male, but it doesn't have to be. This is a general reading. And normally, I don't really assign court cards to um, astrological signs. I know a lot of people do, but it's more about the personality for me. But for whatever reason, I keep being nudged to say, <laughs> this is probably an air sign. So... Um, that's what I'm going to say this time. Don't expect me to say that type of stuff very often, though. That's just not my thing. Uh, but this is a King of Swords personality that we're dealing with on Wednesday, Scorpios. This is somebody who normally is really, like, all in his mind. This is somebody that if... Um, if, if this is a guy, if his, if his girlfriend or if his partner came to me and said, can you tell me what this person feels about me? I would put down cards, and every single one of those cards would be more what he thinks about the about the partner or about the relationship there would probably be no feeling cards there would not be a two of cups there would not be a lover's card even if the relationship was a strong one because this type of person is someone who thinks all the time and sort of ignores that whole heart chakra thing emotions what are those <laughs> second chakra doesn't pay that much attention to the emotional part of that either everything is all about logic 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 when this person is making decisions so here's the thing though we're seeing him on Wednesday and or interacting with him I should say I don't know if we'll actually see him or if this will be through email or text or phone call or Skype or whatever but we're interacting with this person on Wednesday and for somebody who normally doesn't pay very much attention to emotions at all emotions are driving him and for somebody like this when emotions take over 
that's very uncomfortable for these people because they don't know what to do with that. It's foreign territory for them. And so now you've got a double whammy on these poor person on this poor person because emotions are just rocking with them and they're freaking out because emotions are just rocking with them. So they've got a double a double hit right there. The thing is that they are going to be interacting with us on Wednesday. And if we would like to have things to go calm with this person, we have a couple of options. One is back off and let them sort out their own stuff and just give them the space that they need to do that. The other is to find some way to soothe them and help them to see things in a more positive perspective than what they are right then and to help them to um, recognize that what they're feeling is okay and normal given their situation that they're in and that it's okay to feel your feelings. And the trick there is to say that without making them feel like we're patronizing them. <laughs> so we're going to have our work cut out for us on that interaction on Wednesday. Not anything we can't handle because we're pretty comfortable with our emotions. We know how to handle ours and we know how to be sensitive to other people's. So it's just a matter of finding the right words to get across the ideas to this person. And we can do that. No big deal. Little challenge, but no big deal. Now Thursday, what we have coming up, Scorpios, is we have the Five of Swords. And the Five of Swords is telling me that there is some conflict and some disagreement that's showing up in our life. And there's typically when I see this card, it's not just um, any old kind of conflict. This is a conflict where um, you have people that are all supposed to be working towards the same target or the same goal. But what's happening is everybody has different ideas about how to get to that target or goal. And they're not really working together. So that's keeping that project from moving forward. And since that's keeping that project from moving forward, whatever you're doing to help it move forward, that energy is just being lost and just siphoned right away from that, pro from that situation. So this is, um, this is a type of situation that if you can get everybody on the same page, it can be very productive and it can move forward very efficiently. It's just a matter of um, helping everybody to see that being on the same page is beneficial to everyone and then that can move forward. When I have this card coming in right set up, that's a possibility. That can actually happen for us. We can get everybody on the same page. It's kind of our responsibility to do that because we know that this is coming in. We have the heads up. It's kind of like, you know, when you're trusted with with information, uh, you're expected to do something with that information. So when you watch these types of readings, um, this is not for entertainment purposes only, guys. I know a lot of companies like to tell you that when you talk to a psychic, it's really just entertainment. Wrong answer. There's a certain amount of responsibility once you have this information as to how you handle it. And so this is going to be our responsibility to make sure that um, we do what we can to get everybody kind of going on the same page in this project so that we're all moving towards the target um, together in a way that is efficient and functional. All right, so let's move on to Friday. Friday, what you have showing up, what we have showing up is the Four of Coins. This is one of my favorite cards. Um, this is supposed to be the Miser card. That's the way I was taught when I first uh, started uh, reading up about tarot, and, and that's what I saw. Like everywhere I looked is that this is the card about the miser who doesn't share his money and who lives like a pauper even though he's got lots and lots and lots. I have never had it actually show up that way. Uh, for anybody that I've read for, <laughs> I really haven't. And so what I see this card as is having a chance to put some money away in savings. So this is, um, you know, a lot of people live hand to mouth in all kinds of different income brackets. I mean, you would be surprised how many people make huge amounts of income and they're still living hand to mouth. But this is talking about coming away from that, about being able to put some money in savings and not living hand to mouth, putting some money back for something. Um, and this can be putting money back just for a rainy day. This can be putting money back for an opportunity that may come up in the future that you don't know about yet. This can be putting money back for a down payment on a home or a car, or this can be for Christmas presents coming up, whatever. It doesn't really matter what you're putting this money back for as far as the reading is concerned for a general reading, this is just telling me that you have the opportunity and you're putting some money back or you're stashing some money away or putting it in savings uh, for some other time in the future. That's Friday. 
Now, Saturday. Wow, we have a surprising card for Sunday, but we'll get to that. Saturday, what we have coming up is we have the Six of Swords. And the Six of Swords just tells me that there's some kind of progress or some kind of movement in a situation. Um, hmm. Hmm. So what I'm being told is that for a lot of us, the last three cards actually all kind of tie together. So where we have that disagreement, where everybody's going different directions, and it's our responsibility to kind of get everybody on the same page. Once we get everybody on the same page, that is actually what enables us to be able to put some money back. And this card talks about making progress, and this is talking about us making progress financially. So this is having financial goals that we are wanting to fulfill. And this is talking about seeing some kind of tangible progress in reaching those financial goals. Now, the Six of Swords, when this comes up, this is not talking about that we've reached our destination. This is really more about the beginning of the journey. We're beginning to move away from this old way of being financially. We are moving into a new way of being financially, but we don't know yet what that new normal is going to look like. What we do know for sure is that on Saturday, we're seeing that we are making progress. And I feel like for us Scorpios, this uh, in this particular reading, this does have to do with finances, with business, with work, with the people that we work with and projects that we're working on. Okay. All right. So that is Saturday. Now, Sunday, this is the cup that I was like, whoa, this is a weird cup for Sunday. This is the nine of cups, a weird card for Sunday, I should say. Now, Nine of Cups, If you go, for those of you guys who have been watching me for a while, you know that, especially in this deck, the Nine of Cups talks to me about drinking games. Um, and drinking games is kind of metaphorical. So this can be talking about any kind of addiction and um, being subject to the effects of that addiction on Sunday. Um, for a lot of us, this is actually not us. Scorpios, we're kind of control freaks, so we don't we don't like giving into that kind of addiction. Now we can have an addictive personality, but most of the Scorpios that I know, once we get into something that is kind of addictive, we figure that out really fast and we're like, oh no, done with that. <laughs> done with that. And we get out of it quickly because we don't want to lose control. We have control issues basically. And I don't say that in a negative way, <laughs> but we do like to be in charge. We like to know that we are in control of our own thoughts, our own feelings, and that nobody else is pushing us around. So same thing goes with addictions. We don't want an addiction pushing us around. We don't want a craving telling us what we have to put into our body. We just, we don't tolerate that stuff very well. So when I see the Nine of Cups come up for us on Sunday, I don't necessarily feel like this is us um, being controlled by an addiction on Sunday, but I feel like that maybe that we're dealing with somebody who is being controlled by an addiction on Sunday and we are... Um, interacting with that person in some way and gosh there's like a zillion and one ways that this interaction is going to happen I mean I'm being flooded with uh, impressions of different ways that this is going for some of us this is uh, us getting really um, disgusted and tired of seeing it seems like it's the same old same old same old and this person isn't making any progress against this addiction and so we're just getting kind of sick of dealing with it um, and sort of blowing up. I'm having an impression of us blowing up about it. Um, I'm having another impression come in where there's somebody who is very compassionate, uh, where we're being compassionate to this person that's having the problem. Um, there are some of us who um, go with the belief that an addiction is um, something that affects the mind and affects the body in very tangible ways, that it's not all about willpower, that there are some real um, physical issues that have to be dealt with before an addiction can be handled. And, and I think for those of us who are more along that line of thinking, we are the most likely ones to be having some kind of compassionate reaction to this person who uh, caved in to this addiction, especially um, in situations where we feel like this person has been making some progress in trying to get out from under the control of the addiction. But I do just, basically the bottom line here is that we're interacting with somebody who is having trouble with uh, beating an addiction on Sunday. And they may be like right in the middle of, of uh, caving into that. So like if this is somebody who drinks, they might be right in the middle of, 
of drinking a 12 pack um, whenever we're having our interaction with them. If it's somebody that has an addiction to gambling, they might be right in the middle of, you know, spending all kinds of money at the casino and call us up. Um, uh, there's all kinds of ways that this can play out, but it feels to me like when we're having this interaction with this person, they are either right in the middle of doing this thing or they have just come off of doing this and they're feeling really rotten about um, what they've just done. So anyway, <laughs> yay. Um, we do have a very interesting week. There's definitely a lot going on there and I'm kind of excited about some of this stuff. So I just want to thank you all for hanging out with me, for liking, subscribing, sharing all your wonderful comments everybody. I do appreciate all of your support so much. You guys have a fantastic week and I will see you back here the next time. Peace out.